Who gets the best answers? Well, it isn't anyone, and it's certainly not the expert, and neither is it two or three of them. It's all of them. Experts and non-experts together. The best answers comes from everyone. Welcome to Wisdom of Crowds. Wisdom of crowds is the phenomenon that large groups of people are collectively smarter than individual experts when it comes to problem solving, decision making, innovating, guessing, and predicting. Getting the best answer is about accessing the collective wisdom of all the people. The many are smarter than the few. The idea started over 100 years ago. And since then, uh, James Surowiecki wrote a book in 2004 called The Wisdom of Crowds. In it, he demonstrates how large groups have made superior decisions in all areas from pop culture, quantity estimation, general world knowledge, and science. Okay, one example is a bag of marbles. So if I take a bag of marbles, a transparent bag of marbles, you know, this big, I fill it with marbles because everybody knows how big a marble is, right? So you fill up this bag of marbles, and then I show it to someone and I say, guess how many marbles are in this bag? And they say... 500. I show it to someone else. He says 1,000. And then somebody else, 1,500. You know, 8, 850, whatever. <clears throat> so you ask a bunch of people. You ask the crowd. The crowd has to be very big. So let's say I ask 10,000 people or 50,000 people or 100,000 people is even better. The more, the better. That's basically it. Million is even better. It'll be more accurate, the answer. <clears throat> so if I ask all these people what they think a guess is of how many marbles in the bag, then you average the answer and that, uh, that average is either going to be the answer or very, very, very close to the answer. It outperforms the experts like by 90%, this, believe it or not. Uh, and this is science. So, you know, look it up yourself. Another example is on who wants to be a millionaire. Okay, you, you know, the, who wants to be a millionaire in case I don't watch it, but I know, uh, I mean, I know of it. So they have these contestants, right? And they ask, uh, you know, it's about making, if you get the answer right, you, you win money. So they ask you a question, you know, how high is Mount Everest? You know, is it 7,000 feet, 10,000, whatever. Okay, and you get multiple choice for answers. So on who wants to be a millionaire, the experts... The experts of the questions, you know, let's say they're talking about cars, the experts in cars. Let's say they talk about mountains and stuff, the experts in mountains. Let's say they talk about science, experts in science, okay? Just to be clear. So the experts did okay. They were right 65% of the time. Pretty good. I guess it's better than average. But they paled in comparison to the audience because the audience also gets to choose. If you average the choice of the audience, they're right 90% of the time, they were right more often than experts. Just remember that. The collective crowd is smarter most of the time, like 90% of the time in this case, than experts. This can also be called, I like to call it, decentralized information or decentralized opinions. The opposite of wisdom of the crowds is centralized power or centralized information or centralized opinions. Hierarchy is the opposite of wisdom of a crowd. This, by the way, is why I love co-ops, cooperatives, like I told you about uh, Mondragon in Spain, right? Where all the employees make decisions. All the employees of the companies, not just the CEO, makes decisions on everything, including how much salary you get, and so forth, right? How much, how much money should we put into research and development, and a whole bunch of stuff. Now, if many people making a whole bunch of decisions is better, let's take a look at democracy. Now, I'm not talking about this fake democracy we have now, where you vote every four years, who will be ruling over you. No, no, no. I'm talking about real democracy, where the citizens actually make decisions for their own country. Example. Should we bring home the troops from Afghanistan? Should we change the speed limit, higher or lower? How much taxes should we pay for this or for that? You know, And I know there's a lot of people watching right now cringing at what I just suggested, that ordinary citizens will be making these important decisions. 
But we must not forget the whole point of this video, right? Wisdom of crowds. Wisdom of crowds proves to us that large groups of people are collectively smarter than individual experts when it comes to problem-solving, decision-making, innovating, guessing, and predicting. So there. Mm. That is one of the reasons why I love democracy. Now, granted, we don't have decentralized systems set up where citizens of a country can vote on issues right now. But I guarantee you we are moving towards that. It's inevitable. It's going to happen. The only question is, how much suffering will there be before we get there? Now, for wisdom of the crowds to work well and be accurate, a few things are required. The crowd needs to be diverse as possible. The more different opinions, the better. And also, no one should talk about their choice because it will influence other people's choices. And then you have herd behavior, which is, defeats the whole purpose of wisdom of the crowds. Also, more knowledgeable crowds have better outcomes. Makes sense. Uh, yes and no questions are the best, followed by multiple choice questions like a poll or something. It works better when you put up limitations. I'll give you an example. That bag of marbles, right? So if I show you this bag of marbles, it's a full bag of marbles, let's say this big. You know, it's very obvious that it's, 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 it's more than 100, and it's pretty obvious it's less than 50,000. So if you remove those guesses when you ask those, the crowd, and some people say 0, 10, or 100. So if you remove everything under 100 and everything above uh, 50,000, whatever, it gets even more accurate, the answers. Here's a great example of where wisdom of the crowds can save human lives. Let's just say, example, an asteroid is going to collide with Earth. What do we do? The question must be asked to everybody on the planet, which we can't do right now, but, you know, you, with technology today, we could have something like that, but it's not available right now. But anyways, for this example, let's say we can. Okay, so one of the options is, do we blow it up? Right? Do we send a whole bunch of bombs there, missiles there, on the asteroid and blow it up, but then fragments can still come down on the earth and they can still do a lot of damage or do, do do we divert it do we send like boosters there or something and just divert it a bit so it'll go right past earth you know if you ask the entire population of the earth the crowd it will make a better choice than any expert on earth just remember that okay now if citizens were already knowledgeable about different methods and side effects of preventing an asteroid hitting Earth, the result will be even better. Now, currently, there is something going on globally. It started in 2020. It's a big problem right now. You know what I mean. I don't want to say any word that might get me my channel banned. So, if you were to use any common sense, you would listen to everyone in this emergency. Everyone's suggestions, even regular folk and experts. So what does the government, hospitals, and mainstream media do? They censor a gigantic, important part of the entire group, which is all the humans on the planet. There has never been so much censorship like I've seen in 2020 and 2021. It's still going on this day. I'm going to make a video of it one day. If you want to make better decisions, then crowds are your best solution. A country has many people, right? It's a crowd. That's why if everyone were to vote on decisions that your rulers are currently making for you, the crowd choice will always be better. That is why I believe in democracy. Of course, those power-hungry psychopaths, which we call politicians, will not like this concept, the, co the concept of wisdom of crowds. And I am positive if wisdom of a crowds becomes a popular talking point, you know, on the internet, your government will take your tax money and fund research that will make wisdom of the crowds look dangerous and foolish. In the United States, actually, the popular vote is mocked and laughed at. You could say that's wisdom of the crowds, the popular vote. And just a bit about this claim that democracy is nothing more than mob rules, you know, where 51% of the people may take away rights of the other 49%. No. That's why you're... That's why your rights are protected. Some people forget about basic human rights. The Charter or Bill of Rights, the Constitution, that's why that's there. People say that democracy is mob rules. Maybe today, yeah, in today's political system, there's a mob up there that rules over us, yeah. 
but not true if all citizens vote. Some people believe democracy means people will vote on things that you are protected from, like, like personal decisions, like you can only buy, you can only use green toothbrushes or, uh, uh, you know, all cars must be red or TVs can't be bigger than 60 inches or everybody's t-shirt has to be yellow or something like this. Or everyone must go to sleep at 1 a.m. at the latest, you know. They think they will force personal choices on you. That doesn't happen in a democracy. That's why you have the Constitution. So that's it for this episode. So if you like this video, depending on what platform you're on, you know, give me a thumbs up, a like, whatever, whatever it is, share it, subscribe, that'll be helpful. And don't forget, centralized power is cancer. Love, light, and healing.